Hello, my name is Benjamin Clapp. I'm a bariatric surgeon in El Paso, Texas. If you're watching this video, you probably found it through my website and you're probably considering or in the process of getting bariatric surgery. This educational video was created by the American Society of Bariatric and Metabolic Surgeons, of which I'm a member, by the Patient Education Committee. This will count as your educational webinar, or this also just counts if you wanna learn more about bariatric surgery. Please enjoy and call my office if you have any questions. After you watch this video, when you come to the office, we'll ask you to sign an attestation stating that you did watch this video and this will count for your educational webinar. Welcome. We are glad you've decided to learn more about what weight loss surgery is and how it can impact the health of many people with obesity and obesity-related medical conditions. The goal of this session is to help you understand the risks of obesity and how it impacts a person's life. We also want you to review the options to consider for surgery and the risks and benefits of each of those options. To conclude, we certainly hope that you will feel empowered with this knowledge to go forward and make an informed decision on your journey to health and wellness. Let's start by talking about fat. Many of us think of fat as being bad, but it is actually an important and sophisticated organ that releases many hormones or chemicals to communicate with our brain and body. These hormones are important in controlling our hunger and regulates how our body handles and burns calories. Excess fat can lead to obesity and over time lead to chronic disease. Our brains are set up to control how much we weigh and there is a particular weight known as the set point weight, where our brain wants us to stay. Our brain and gut communicate using hormones that control our hunger and metabolism, or how we use things we eat and drink for energy. If the set point weight is high, then obesity can develop and lead to more medical problems and chronic disease. Why do we care? There is clear evidence that obesity and the chronic diseases related to obesity can lead to death and they decrease our lifespan by several years. An important measurement we use to define various levels of obesity is called BMI, which stands for Body Mass Index. It is an equation that takes into account our weight and height. In this chart, we see that weight increases as we go left to right and height increases as we go from top to bottom. As BMI increases from blue to red, so does our risk for medical problems. Some of the chronic diseases related to obesity are illustrated in this diagram. Essentially, every organ system is affected by obesity. Conditions such as high cholesterol, sleep apnea, diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease are commonly seen. Also, other conditions you may not have thought are related to obesity, such as gout, migraines, reflux, depression, and cancer. How does weight affect our personal lives? Our weight can often dictate the ability to do the things we want, such as riding amusement park rides, playing with children, attending social gatherings, and also how we travel. Diet and exercise are important factors in determining our weight, but they are not the only factors to consider. Our genetics and hormones play an important role and may prevent our diet and exercise efforts from working the way we want them to. As we've studied obesity, we have learned that this old theory of eat less and exercise more is outdated and can often cause people to feel ashamed when efforts to lose weight do not work or last. Now we know better. Genetics and hormones play an important part in losing weight, just as diet and exercise do. Surgery is an important tool that can impact our weight loss. Weight loss surgery interacts with the hormone signals between our brain, gut, and the rest of our body, and can alter how hungry we are and the way our body burns calories. 
These changes that surgery brings can actually lower the set point and positively impact obesity. The National Institute of Health recommends that healthy lifestyle changes and medical therapy be used to help prevent or treat obesity. However, as our BMI increases, surgery should be considered because of the overwhelming evidence that it can reverse or alter many chronic diseases related to obesity and help reverse the course of obesity itself. Going back to the illustration of how obesity affects every organ system in our body, we know that weight loss surgery can also impact those areas. High cholesterol, sleep apnea, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, and more can significantly improve after weight loss surgery. The majority of patients who choose weight loss surgery will note an improved quality of life, and research shows that our risk of death is reduced long-term. Diabetes is a very important medical problem that has a serious impact on our quality of life and can cause significant damage to other organs in our body. Weight loss surgery helps patients take control of their diabetes. Compared to non-surgical methods of weight loss, as well as diabetic medications, surgery may be superior in helping improve diabetes. This means you could come off your diabetes medications or no longer have diabetes. This disease, however, could return over time. A great resource to use is the Escape Diabetes webpage located at escapediabetes.org. Here you can calculate your risk of complications from diabetes, including death, over the next 10 years with and without weight loss surgery. The results are meant to be specialized to you based on specific information that you enter and can help you make an informed decision about weight loss surgery as it relates to diabetes. So who is a candidate for surgery? Three questions to ask are, what is my BMI? What are my medical conditions? And am I safe for surgery? Your answers to these questions and discussion with a weight loss surgeon can help you decide if you are a good candidate for weight loss surgery. The laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy, otherwise known as a vertical sleeve gastrectomy, or simply a sleeve, involves placing a tube into the stomach to avoid making the sleeve too big or too small, stapling alongside that tube, and then removing the tube. This turns the stomach into the size and shape of a banana and removes three-fourths of the stomach, or almost all of the stomach that produces the hunger hormone. It also helps with other hormones that fight diabetes and obesity. This is a simpler procedure than the bypass or the duodenal switch, both of which require new intestinal connections. While this achieves a great amount of weight loss for most patients, it can worsen gastroesophageal reflux or heartburn disease, or less common, it can cause the disease in a patient that doesn't have it to begin with. The advantages of the sleeve gastrectomy involves its simplicity and its effect on hunger and metabolism. 
If a patient already has heartburn symptoms, having a sleeve gastrectomy can worsen reflux or at least not change the symptoms. In a smaller percentage of patients, the sleeve can cause GERD that wasn't present before surgery. Your surgeon will evaluate you for heartburn symptoms before surgery. Some patients have conditions that make the sleeve a better choice because of its lack of intestinal connections. Patients who already have problems with absorption, abdominal scar tissue, or large abdominal hernias, conditions requiring chronic steroid or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication use, or who are higher cardiovascular risk may be better served with a sleeve gastrectomy. The laparoscopic root and Y gastric bypass is the gold standard operation for obesity. It has been performed successfully since the 1960s and laparoscopically since the 1990s. It is very effective against diabetes and is the best operation for treating reflux. Patients who undergo a gastric bypass must stop smoking and never smoke again. Patients who take NSAIDs for joint and other pain will need to stop these as well and abstain from these for life. Both of these recommendations are due to the increased risk of ulcers at the connection between the gastric pouch and the small intestine. Because of the lower connection in the small intestine, there is a risk of bowel obstruction requiring emergency surgery in the future. To look closer at the weight loss you may expect after the bypass, at one year, you may lose 31% of your total body weight and 71% of excess body weight. At three years, you may expect to have lost close to 29% of your total body weight and 66% of your excess body weight. Again, these are estimates according to the MBSA QIP's national database. The gastric bypass has the same or better effects on hunger metabolism, and diabetes as the sleeve, and is the best surgery for reflux. Since it is a more complex operation with two new bowel connections, it does have higher risk for complications and future nutritional deficiencies. The biliopancreatic diversion with duodenal switch or the BPD DS, or simply the switch, is an operation that involves a sleeve gastrectomy and then two new bowel connections, like with the gastric bypass. The difference here is that the upper connection is between the duodenum, or the first part of the small intestine, which starts after the stomach, and the ileum, the last part of the small intestine before the colon. This is more complex than the bypass to perform. And there are fewer surgeons who perform this than there are that perform the bypass and sleeve. This procedure has the best results for weight loss and is often therefore used for patients with a very high BMI. It has a very good rate of improvement or resolution of multiple medical problems. It also has a higher risk for nutritional deficiencies and these patients need to be monitored closely in follow-up visits. The duodenal switch has the best results of any bariatric procedure on diabetes and several other diseases. Because there is no connection between the stomach and intestine, there is less of a problem with NSAIDs than with the bypass. The weight loss is better than other procedures as well, but the duodenal switch is the most complex bariatric operation to perform and therefore takes longer, has more associated possible complications, and there are fewer surgeons performing this operation. Because of the two connections, this has a risk of bowel obstruction like the gastric bypass. This also has a higher chance of vitamin and nutrient deficiencies and more frequent loose bowel movements. The single anastomosis duodenal ileal bypass with sleeve gastrectomy or SADIS or simply the loop DS 
is the most recent approved procedure for weight loss. This is similar to a duodenal switch, but without a second connection. This is good for obesity and diabetes and has a better risk profile than the full DS. This is a procedure that can be done after a sleeve gastrectomy to treat obesity and or diabetes that have not fully resolved with a sleeve. The advantages of the SADIS are its excellent outcomes when compared to the sleeve and its slightly lower risk than the full DS. This still involves bowel connections, malabsorption, and also has a risk of more frequent bowel movements. This graph illustrates the amount of weight you may lose after the different types of weight loss procedures. From left to right, the weight loss goes from highest to lowest. The blue bars indicate excess body weight loss and the gray bars indicate total body weight loss. As you can see, both the SADIS and duodenal switch procedures result in the highest amount of weight loss average. The bypass is slightly below that, followed by the sleeve, and then the gastric band. While weight loss is an important outcome of surgery, each procedure has its own risks. It is important to review these risks with your weight loss surgery team because procedures that offer the most weight loss are often more complex and carry a greater risk of nutritional complications. The next question to discuss with your surgeon is, am I safe for surgery? The laparoscopic gastric bypass and the laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy have been shown to be as safe as gallbladder removal in terms of risk of death and major complications. Your surgeon can discuss your medical problems and whether you are higher risk due to cardiac, liver, or kidney disease, and if you qualify for surgery. You will also need to have appropriate social support for recovery from surgery, and will need to go through your program's pathway to surgery which will include an evaluation of all your medical conditions and whether you have any mental health issues that may complicate your recovery from surgery. Once you start the pathway with your bariatric surgery program, this may take several months, depending on your individual program's requirements, as well as your insurance company's requirements. After surgery, most patients go home after a one to two night hospital stay and are back to work within a couple of weeks. Before and after surgery, physical activity is important to improve success. Given the changes to your gastrointestinal system, you will need to eat foods high in protein and low in carbohydrates. Bariatric surgery programs, which are certified by the ASMBS, through the MBSA QIP are continuously evaluated for quality and measure their surgical outcomes against national standards on a regular basis. They frequently reassess and retrain to maintain high standards, and therefore, the certification is a sign of excellence. Bariatric surgery centers use a multidisciplinary approach to obesity care. Yours will involve a surgeon or surgeons nurses, dietitians, behavioral health specialists, and some will also have obesity medicine specialists, as well as specialists in cardiac, pulmonary, and sleep medicine. Most programs will follow a pathway similar to this one. After initial evaluation, there will be a period of supervised weight loss with a dietitian and visits with a psychologist. There will be some preoperative medical evaluation 
and some imaging studies and or endoscopy. Your surgeon will decide what studies are appropriate for you. Once all of this is completed, a final visit before surgery will ensure all of the medical issues have been addressed and surgery will be scheduled. In conclusion, obesity is a disorder of metabolism and is not just a lack of diet or exercise. Obesity is a chronic disease that can be difficult to treat, and if left untreated, it can shorten lifespan. Surgery is often the best treatment for obesity and associated conditions such as diabetes. While some patients will gain some weight after losing it, the vast majority of patients lose a substantial amount of weight and keep it off. The surgeries we've discussed are safe, especially when compared to the risk of the disease of obesity without surgery. So the final question is, are you ready? Well, I hope that everybody enjoyed that video. If you've had any questions at all, then you can call us at 915-351-6020. You can also uh, contact us through our website. There's a contact form there that will send an email directly to us. Uh, thank you very much for watching this and hopefully we'll see you soon in the office.